Hey, good morning, YouTube land. Welcome to our inspirational content once again. Second Samuel, the fifth chapter, will be our next chapter that we'll be reading on today. And today is 261 days into this amazing Bible challenge. Let's get started. I am having water this morning. Just a plain little bottle, y'all. No fancy cup this time. And uh, let me know what you're having in the comments. And let's get started. Hopefully, this upload is not too bad. But just know that God is still with us. We are persevering through all obstacles. I don't care what it is. Technology, life problems, our own personal health, whatever it is, we're not going to stop in Jesus' name. Let's continue to read in chronological order. And our long-term goal is to continue to open our Bibles every morning. The short-term goal is we are reading the whole Bible. We started from Genesis 1, and we are all the way where we are now. Yes, we still have a long way to go, but we've come from a mighty long way. So let's just encourage ourselves, pat ourselves on the back, smile, look in the mirror and say, God got us. God got us. Not me, not you, but God. Let's get started right now. 2 Samuel 5. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, <coughs> singing, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thy was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over them. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter, and smitest the Jebusites, and the lame, and the blind, that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. May God add a blessing to the reading of his wonderful word. And we're going to go into this beautiful, awesome um, summary for today. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. Now that David's main rival for the throne is dead, the tribes of Israel come to David and agree that he's really been their true leader and the shepherd of Israel for some time. Thus, they crown king. They crown him king. And David makes a covenant with them. He's 30 years old now at the beginning of his reign, and he will reign for 40 years. He'll stay in Hebron for the next seven years and rule from Jerusalem for the next 33 years. Next, David leads an army to Jerusalem to fight the Jebusites who are ruling the city. To their surprise, the Jebusites are defeated 
and takes Zion. Apparently, the lame and the blind people of Jerusalem sided with the Jebusites. So David decides to hate them and orders them attacked and prohibited from his house. David builds up the city, making it his own with the support of his trusty friend, God. The king of Tyre sends cedar wood to David, helping him to build his, his palace. Furthermore, he takes more wives and concubines and many more children are born to him. <clears throat> the Philistines attempt to attack Jerusalem since they've heard that it's got a new king. David fortifies himself and his soldiers in their stronghold while the Philistines amass out in the valley below. David asks God if God would help him fight and defeat the Philistines. That's powerful. He asks God. He sought God. God says he'll prevail. Yes. <laughs> they handily defeat the Philistines. God acting like a bursting flood mm, 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 of vengeance. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. That's what that remind me of, that scripture in the Bible. The Philistines abandon their idols, which are captured by the Israelites. Huh, hopefully they won't worship it, right? This isn't the end, though, and the Philistines try to attack again. God tells David, to march behind the Philistine lines and face them opposite a bunch of balsam tree. When they hear the noise of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, they should interpret it as God's sign to strike, which they do, whipping the Philistines yet once more. Hey, y'all, sounds like the tables has turned on the Philistines. A couple of chapters back in 1 Samuel, in the book of 1 Samuel, God had allowed the Philistines to attack the Israelites, and they won at everything. And that's what led to the death of King Saul and Jonathan and a couple of his other sons. But now that David has been reigned, uh, has been crowned king over, um, over Israel, Look what's happening now. The tables has turned. The Philistines, they no longer have God's permission to win over his people. Amen. What a powerful lesson. I hope you all enjoyed that. I sure did. Enjoy the rest of your day and like the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And enjoy your Tuesday. Bye.